we set these up, we start with the absolute value of x minus the value that x is approaching. So in this case, x is approaching 3. We set that less than delta. Then, the rest of this that we're setting up based off the definition, we start with the absolute value. We compare now to the function. So we're applying the limit to 5x minus 2. As we continue with that definition, we are subtracting the limit, so we're subtracting 13. Now the problems we saw last time, we had a particular distance. We were getting away from this limit value. Um, in this case, we don't have that distance defined, so we let epsilon represent that distance. But now the game is still the same. You're going to take what you have here in absolute value. You're going to simplify it. So when I simplify it, I've got the absolute value of 5x minus 15. All that less than epsilon. We recall that at this point, something should factor. So if we take a greatest common factor of 5 out, got the absolute value of x minus 3 left. That is less than epsilon. At which point, you're trying to get this absolute value by itself because we're trying to make it look like what we have over here. Understanding that if we have the absolute value of x minus 3 over here less than delta, whatever we solve for and get over here, which we get what? The absolute value of x minus 3 less than epsilon over 5. This epsilon over 5, we can then compare back to that delta. So we sum things up with a little therefore statement. We say therefore let or choose a delta that is equal to epsilon over 5. Meaning whatever my distance is for epsilon, whatever distance away from the limit I'm trying to get with that, if I take a fifth of that distance, that's how close to 3 up here I have to get. Because remember, delta was that distance away from 3 that we're, we're getting to. All right, as we try to prove that this limit works, we start with the absolute value of x minus whatever x is approaching. In this case, 2. We set that less than delta. Over here, we set up the absolute value of our function. I don't know why I included absolute value up there. There's no point in doing that. Just gotten so excited about all this absolute value. Really, you don't need that in there. That's my bad. But the function is 25 minus 5x. And we are subtracting the limit, 15. All of that will be less than epsilon, just as we discussed on the previous problem. So we know how the game is played now. We're taking what's inside the absolute value here. We're trying to turn it into an absolute value expression like we have over here. So as we clean this up, collecting like terms, we've got absolute value of 10 minus 5x. All right, at which point we are factoring out a greatest common factor of, well, you could use 5, right? But look at where you're trying to go. You want that x term to be positive, and you want that constant term to be negative, right? So it makes sense to take out a negative 5, maybe. Now, since we're taking a negative 5 out, we really haven't had to worry about this up to this point. But remember, absolute value is involved. So we'd be taking the absolute value of that negative 5 as we take it out. So absolute value of negative 5 pops out. Absolute value that is left over. Well, let's see here. If I take a negative 5 out, that'd be the negative 2, right, plus an x that is left. At which point, if I do some cleaning up, the absolute value of negative 5, of course, is 5. If I reshuffle these terms, it'd be x minus 2 inside the absolute value. 
keeping in mind where I'm trying to get to, I want to get x minus 2 by itself, so divide the 5 over. We've got the absolute value of x minus 2 less than epsilon over 5. Meaning that this guy here and this guy here sync up. So we can draw a conclusion and say, therefore, let or choose a delta equal to epsilon over 5. 